In this video, I want to show you how to authenticate the Next.js frontend with the WP GraphQL API. Now this site is fetching the data from the WordPress API without authentication. That means we are able to fetch the publicly available posts, that is the published posts without authentication. But if you want to access the draft posts or private posts via the WP GraphQL API, that's when you need authentication. Also, if you want to write something to the backend API, such as adding posts, creating uh, comments, etc., then also you need authentication. But if you just want to fetch publicly available data, then authentication is not required. Also, in the previous videos, people had asked how to post data to the GraphQL API, and that needs mutation queries rather than the, rather than the normal queries. And to perform mutations, you need authentication. So in order to add the authentication, we need to start from the WordPress backend itself. Currently, you can see that we have installed the WP GraphQL plugin, which enables the GraphQL API on WordPress. But by default, the plugin does not support authentication. So we have to install an additional plugin that works on top of this plugin. And that plugin is WP GraphQL JWT authentication, and it can be downloaded from this GitHub page. The plugin is being the plugin is created by the same team that created the WP GraphQL plugin. Here you can see the link to download the plugin as a zip file. So click it and then let me download it to some location on the computer. Once the download is complete, go back to the WordPress dashboard and go to the plugins section and upload the plugin zip file. Choose the zip file, then click install. The plugin is now being uploaded to our WordPress site and it has successfully been installed. The next step is activating the plugin. Okay, now the plugin is activated. The next step is adding a constant to our wp-config.php file. The name of the constant is wp graphql jwt auth secret key. This secret key will be used to encode and decode JSON web tokens. That means we are implementing token based authentication using JSON web tokens or JWTs. So I want to connect to the server via SSH. So let me open the terminal. Okay, now I am inside the server's command prompt. The next step is to go to the site's root location, which is located inside the var www html directory. cd var www html and here is the wp-config.php file we want to edit. Let me open that in the nano editor. This is where we want to add the constant. Before that, we want to generate the secret key. And for that, we can use the WordPress salt generator, which generates secret keys. Open that page in a browser tab. Then grab one of these keys. Copy the key to clipboard, then come back to the terminal. Define GraphQL JWT auth secret key followed by the key value. This key will be used by the plugin to generate authentication tokens. Whenever you want to invalidate all existing tokens, all you need to do is change this value and that will invalidate all the existing tokens. If you want to learn more about JWT based authentication, you can find a link in the description. Go and read that. Okay, now save the file and exit the editor. Next, in order to generate the refresh token, that is the JWT token, we have to run a mutation query. Going to the graph IQL IDE, open the query composer and we want to create a mutation. 
now what is mutation some of you might be hearing this term for the first time in the context of graphql mutation is a type of query that modifies the database instead of just reading from it if you are just reading from the api that is called a query instead if you are writing to it or modifying it such as updating deleting or creating some data that is called a mutation here we want to generate a refresh token by logging into the wordpress api so it's creating something hence a mutation click add new mutation then expand the login section we want to send the following inputs username password and client mutation id which is just the string unique id you can use the password and username of any admin user it is required only for generating the token later you can i mean your front end can authenticate with the token instead of the username and password by the way don't think that i am sharing the credentials with you publicly i will change them after recording this video okay we want the refresh token back so check that field name the mutation as login mutation then try running the mutation and here is the refresh token we have got back copy the value to clipboard then we want to add it to our next js front end here i have opened our next js site in the code editor and we want to add it to the environment file so within the project directory create a new file called .env.local name the token as wordpress auth refresh token then paste the value from the clipboard next we want to make sure that this token is sent along with all requests as authorization header bearer token so open the graphql request.js file this is where we send all the requests from here we had already added a headers constant and set the content type header in addition to that we want to add the authorization header as well first check if the token is present in the environment variable or not it can be checked using the process.env variable authorization equals bearer followed by the key value okay from now on with every request next js will add this refresh token also if the token gets validated by the wordpress backend authentication successful now let's verify everything we have done so far you can see that the blog page is loading without any errors opening a single post page and it's also showing up correctly however even if i comment out this part still we will not get any errors why because the page requires only the publicly available api data to render which works even without authentication so in order to verify let's restrict the api to authenticated users only to force authentication you can go to the graphql settings page and check this option restrict endpoint to authenticated users save the changes reload the page and now we got the error as expected then coming back uncomment this section and then we got the page back without any errors so authentication is working in the next video i will show you how to post comments using authentication and mutation thanks for watching